All right, thank you. Welcome everybody. This live stream is going to bring the December Master Copy Challenge winners for 2020. Um, I'm joined here with our two other hosts, Glenn Vilpu and Miles Yoshida. Welcome, gentlemen. Hello. I feel like we have a little, we have a spectator behind Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's fine. It's actually really cute. So um, for everyone watching this right now, uh, the stream is on YouTube, but you can chat during the live stream in the in the chat, the live chat on YouTube, or you can join us on our Discord server and you can chat in the uh, live stream chat channel. And I'll be checking in on those chats throughout the duration of the stream. So we're going to be announcing the winners today. Just a little bit about our judges. My name is Joshua Jacobo. I'm the founder of New Masters Academy. Uh, Glenn Vilpu is uh, one of our senior instructors in Masters Academy. He's, you almost certainly know who Glenn is. Um, Glenn has many courses on the New Masters Academy site. And uh, also I should mention that we are going to be, New Masters Academy is going to be publishing uh, the newest edition of Glenn's famous uh, Vilpu drawing manual. So we're excited about that. And uh, Glenn, welcome, welcome to the stream. Thank you. And uh, we've also we're also joined by Miles. Uh, Miles is the newest instructor to uh, join the New Masters Academy roster. Uh, Miles is a fine artist working in traditional media. He specializes in linear ink drawings, uh, ink with either with pen or I guess now primarily brush. Right, Miles? Yeah, I love the brush. Yes, and uh, so Miles has got a course coming out at New Masters Academy that is specifically on inking techniques. And uh, if you want to follow Miles's work, the way to do that is on is on uh, Instagram. Uh, Miles's handle is miles.yoshida. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, if you're just joining us and you don't know about these challenges, every month via Discord, New Masters Academy hosts uh, challenges. These are free to everybody. You don't have to be a New Masters Academy subscriber to participate. Uh, the Discord channel is also open to anybody, so you can follow the link in our description if you um, are interested in, in joining us. Uh, the next challenge that is, has already begun five days ago is actually a 100 hand challenge. And so really exciting, people are already starting to do it. If you feel like to participate, I uh, really encourage you to do that. Um, the, the winners today, we're gonna be having three categories, which are quality of analysis, challenge, other words, uh, ambition and craftsmanship. And each of these categories is gonna have three winners, a third, second, and first place. So the first place winners are gonna be uh, winning a one-year scholarship to New Masters Academy. Um, you can hold on to that. If you've already got a subscription, you can start using that, or you could also gift that subscription. Uh, also, the first place winners are gonna be winning a Jaclay print. Uh, one of Miles' uh, fantastic drawings he graciously donated for this uh, this challenge. So thank you, Miles, for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're also uh, giving out Master Boxes. Uh, Master Box is a partnership with uh, Faber Castell, which is our favorite uh, pencil manufacturer out of Germany. And it includes um, a bunch of different pencils in three different colors. It's a really fantastic box. If you want to learn more about Master Box, you can, you can go to uh, store.nma.art. Um, all the winners are going to be getting that for second and third. And then the winners will also be getting the Discord uh, badges or Discord roles. So with that said, uh, we are really excited about this. We had so many submissions and so much strong work. I think we can all agree we were really impressed by uh, the submissions. But in the interest of time, since we have so much to get through, um, maybe it makes sense if we just go ahead and get started. So we're going to start with the quality of analysis category. We're going to start with our third place. And then what we're gonna do is show the work and then each of the judges are gonna talk about uh, what we liked about the piece. And also, as always, we're gonna talk about room for improvement. We're an educational institution. That's the reason we're all here. Um, just wanna say real quick before we start, if you didn't win one of these challenges uh, or if you didn't win one of the, one of the categories, uh, please keep in mind that um, there were some tough choices here. You know, it is possible that you were like right at the edge and didn't make it. Try not to be discouraged. You know, this isn't a contest, it's a challenge. The point is for all of us to grow and become better as artists. And so if you're disappointed you didn't win, try again uh, next month. Look at the, the people who did win, listen to the feedback, and actually try to improve and, and move forward. That's sort of the spirit. You know, this is a marathon, it's not a sprint. 
all of us are our students for our entire lot our entire lives when it comes to art so enough of that uh so our third place quality of analysis winner is uh riku uh hiroko and uh look we've got the so each of the each of the challengers submitted three images so we're just going to show the three on on the screen at once um miles would you like to start by talking about what you about these and then maybe what you think this artist could work on uh, going forward uh yeah sure um well this was uh these drawings kind of immediately jumped out at me when looking at the whole pool of submissions and um i think the handling of the traditional medium in this case it looks like charcoal vine of some sort or charcoal and then maybe the first image being a uh, charcoal pencil or chalk um, i just thought that there was uh, a real aptitude when it came to looking at the originals and get stepping inside the mind of you know the original artist and therefore Riku is able to navigate these images because they are complex for a lot of reasons um, but he was able to navigate these drawings and reproduce them but I especially like the fact that in the second image the sergeant with the nail male nude stretching his back um, you know I, I must confess I'm going to get a little boiled for this, but I, I don't really like a lot of Sargent's drawings per se. And I found that in this shots particular fired. drawing, yeah, shots fired, I know. But um, <laughs> wait, we, we all get to the point. Anyways, that's beyond the, that's beside the point. But I found that Riku, I really liked the way that he interpreted this drawing because it is, you know, it is master copy. We're trying to be faithful to the original. But in some ways, I actually feel that I prefer this one more than the original. I know that may sound like high praise and, but I just wanted to point out that I felt that there was a real sense of atmosphere with this. Um, I also preferred kind of the softness of the lighting and some of the rhythms of the contours. So, you know, even it's a good point that even when you're a student, it's it's possible sometimes to, you know, knock it out of the park and improve on something because all artists, we're not always trying to make something perfect. Um, so you take a master copy and sometimes you you can actually step past some of those moments that the artist maybe was limiting themselves at. But I, I really liked this set. It just felt very strong. And um, it really felt like they put on the sergeant hat and they wore it well. So it was, it was a well, good set. What about room to improve? Room oh, to room improve, to sorry. Um, room to improve. Uh, I would say that, um, oh, can we, can we look at here? I'll, I'll bring it up for my, my sheet to look at the all three simultaneously. Yeah, so uh, we've got like a live stream director. So I guess if you just ask um, Elizabeth oh. and pull up what you want. Oh, thank you, Elizabeth. Um, room for improvement. Uh, it's hard. So when we're talking about like master copies, uh, it's sometimes it's difficult when there's not a glaring issue to critique and say, what is the room for improvement? Um, but I would say if you want to improve, to continue from time to time, it's always good to go back to master copies and choose a variety of different artists. Um, so to continue just trying to wear all these various caps, like I said before, and, and that way you become more in tune to the different practices and techniques, things like that. But I would say for the third image, the Sergeant copy, um, I felt that the Sergeant original, he, he's very much note taking. And so, the left arm when we're talking about art history and stuff we say the left arm meaning from the viewer standpoint just to clarify the left arm if it, it felt you know kind of weak to me um and so to copy that i would say don't always fall into the pitfall of trying to copy so faithfully take that moment to say well does this feel like it's actually working is the foreshortening working is that hand kind of bland quite frankly um so don't you know stop stop at that point and say, well, I've copied it and that's all I want to do. I would say use your powers as an artist to try to improve wherever you can. And I'm not going to say that anyone here is going to be a Michelangelo, Leonardo, blah, 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 et cetera. But, but it's still a good practice as a student to, to find those moments and then improve. Because these are all, like I said, they're all very, you know, faithful copies to the originals. Um, so that would be my, you know, uh, little tidbit about improvement. Yeah, fantastic. So, um, Glenn, would you like to talk a little bit about what you think Riku yeah, did well and what he could improve on? Uh, start with the one on the left, the far one. 
Uh, this is sort of difficult. Uh, I happen to the cop the the, the the drawing a copy of a Harry Carmine. Well, Harry was one of my students. I'm not not student, but one of my teachers. So I know I know Harry's work really well. And the diff the difficulty uh, with uh, taking and copying from anybody is we see the end result. We don't necessarily uh, see how he went about doing the drawing, and that that's 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 really a difficult thing to do. So that in a sense we're copying uh, maybe the fourth or the fifth step through or the fifth or the tenth step through a drawing, and it's in, hard. It's hard to take and see how did he do it, and that's that's what you're trying to do is get the person's understanding. You're picking his brain. And so that was it. So anyway, that would be my suggestion is to take him, because Harry was very direct in his drawing. It's not, it's not a detailed copy type thing. And one of the things that he himself emphasized that he was trying to do was show the vitality in the drawing. And so that's where I think that the improvement would come into is to try to uh, take time uh, to be direct. Like people are always trying to say, well, we have to do uh, quick sketch drawings that we have to need two minute or one minute poses. Well, to, to, to capture a gesture, it's not a question of how many minutes you spent to do it. It's capturing the gesture. And so that when we uh, look at Harry's now, Harry would, would, would never have that sort of a continuous hard line around the contour. That's not something he would do. And so you have, you have to look, he would be very, when he would draw a line, now this is, I'm drawing, I'm giving you some information because I know the guy, <laughs> okay. <clears throat> he would have put his pencil down and then he would take and think about, okay, where am I gonna go? And then make a line. And in the process of doing that, always considering the sort of the design of the line and then the shape that he's taking and drawing. And so that, that's part of, the, part of the process. And so the, the, it's the feeling, it's the feeling for, for the drawing. Uh, that you that you take and try to go for, and it's like Miles was saying, you don't you you study them, but it's not the the point of making a duplicate is not necessarily the point. You're you're studying, you're learning from it. Uh, I'm doing, doing studies. I'm drawing from old masters all the time. In fact, I just spent two hours of taking in uh, drawing from a bunch of old masters, people that nobody's ever even heard of, heard of. And it, but they're interesting. And so you draw from them, you learn from them. Anyway, that's my thing. And so to look, look for word, words of the mind of the guy that did it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a, I think that's a great way to, to put it. I know that with this challenge, these questions have come up a lot. Somebody on YouTube was even saying, you know, what makes a copy? You know, um, it's a little tricky to answer those questions because especially in art, the, our language is, means different things to different people. So I think the important thing when, when uh, students and not just students, but everybody, like Glenn just said, when, when we're doing a master copy, in my mind, the idea, it's almost like we're reverse engineering what they did because Michelangelo is not on New Masters Academy. We can't look at his lectures or read his book and learn the way he worked. But despite you know their best efforts, and oftentimes with the old masters, their techniques were carefully guarded secrets. And the studio drawings, like in the case of Rubens, for example, the studio drawings were, were not meant for public consumption. Uh, this idea that the sketch is something we can show as final art, you know, this is before Rodin, that didn't really exist. And so um, 
I think with many of the masters, you have this sprezzatura. They're trying to hide their technique and make it look easy, even though it's a craft and a lot of work went into it. And so when we analyze th these works, you know, we're trying to figure out how they did it. And we're trying to extract information that can be useful. Like Glenn and Miles both said, like the point is not to do a perfect copy. I mean, if we were art forgers, which maybe is a lucrative uh, opportunity for some of these contestants. If you're an art forger, sure. But in our case, this is one of the ways we study. And this is how the masters studied each other. So Rubens went to Italy and made copies of Michelangelo. Watteau made copies of Rubens. All throughout art history, you see this, this activity. And so I'm sure we'll come back to this point. But uh, Elizabeth, maybe you can show all three, because I think uh, Miles and Glenn said most of what um, I would have I would have said. I do like um, as Miles put it, with the sergeants in particular, I like that there actually is like a stronger sense of movement and form than in the original. And even though that might sound blasphemous, like I agree with Miles, there's no reason you can't improve on what you see as weaknesses in the drawing. Because this, this is just a sketch. You know, maybe these artists did tens of thousands of drawings, and maybe there's, you know, 50 or 10 or three that are remained for pos have remained for posterity. So imagine all the drawings that were not seen. Each one of these is not a finished masterpiece. You know, this is the way that these artists work. This is the way that they thought. And so there's no reason not to assume that we can't make improvements on, on this work. And so I like, just like Miles said, I agree. I like that you are trying to improve on the solidity of the sergeants and, and make them flow. Um, and with the Harry Carmine, I agree with Glenn. You know, if you want to do this kind of direct drawing, it's Carmines are very hard to copy because it's, it's sort of a performative drawing style. It's uh, almost like Matisse or something. There's like a, a direct line that's that's making a lot of a, a statement. It is very like muscular, powerful drawing technique. There is one video of Harry Carmian lecturing on YouTube. I, I think it's still there um, that you can see if you want to get some idea. Um, other than that, I think the closest artist where you can see this kind of technique would be artists like Glenn Vilpu, Carl Ganas, Steve Houston, uh, Vernon, there's a little bit of, of the remnants of this sort of like really direct style. But so I think the sergeants probably were more successful than the Carmian for those reasons. Like Glenn, favoring the outline with too much, you know, the way I, the way I perceive watching, looking at Harry's drawings and I've collected these drawings and um, um, like, like Glenn was saying, this is somebody that we know. But with Harry, I see it is that he's visualizing the forms in his mind. So he's only using a few lines to contain that volume, but he has a three-dimensional form in his head, and that's how he can get away with making it so minimal. And so in the future, if you're trying to study this, this style, you need to look, like Glenn said, beyond just the lines that are there and try to imagine what are the forms, what, what's the mental up picture, and then just putting the lines that you need to make that. And so there's like a brevity of, of this style that is, uh, I think it's what makes it really, really attractive. But I mean, overall, fantastic job. There were a few really good copies of the Sargents. Um, it was actually like yours, I found out, partially because of the improvement, but also just the, the, nice, the nice tonal qualities that the pieces had. Like they really, I think they came together um, as, as works as well. You know, the actual the, the middle drawing here it just looks strong it's just attractive i think the way you handled the value is really strong so i, I kind of tell everything in terms of room for improvement um, i think you should keep doing master studies and i think you should um definitely start studying some of the masters going back further um where maybe getting away from the masters that are working from life and start looking at the masters that were designing from imagination i think that would be helpful for you to keep reinforcing the things that are working and strengthen those. But uh, fantastic job. That was kind of a long pass on Riku, so we probably will need to pick up the pace to get through everybody. But unless anyone has something to add, I think we can we can move on. Okay, great. So let's go to uh, our second place winner. Um, let's see if we have the name up here. Okay, so this is uh, Svetlana. So. Yeah, fantastic work, Svetlana. Glenn, maybe you want to start off this time and talk a little bit about uh, what was good and what we liked and, and what could be yeah, improved. Uh, can we go up uh, pretty tight on the on the first drawing there? Can we open? Yeah, great. Okay, <clears throat> one of the one of the things. Okay, I teach animal drawing, <laughs> no. so I'm really uh, in, in fact. Uh, uh, we just got a couple new ponies uh, yesterday, so I've uh, been drawing, <laughs> drawing ponies. But 
one of the things that uh, is really nice about these drawings is there's the, uh, the control of the way we have the tone and the line. It really, it's really coming across you know, beautiful values in the drawing. Uh, the, 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 the area, of course, that uh, needed that where, 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 where we need, where we, where we needed, uh, need uh, uh, improvement. You, you have to start with the structure. <laughs> you got to start from the inside out. You have to really you know, understand the skeleton of the animals. But the beautiful drawings. Can we uh, take them? Go to the next one. Okay. Now, uh, when we were, we were talking about Harry's drawings, well, Rembrandt sort of falls into the same category. These drawings are not uh, carefully studied drawings. They're, we put them down, direct and to the point, and to copy that, that's difficult. And even adding, working with the wash, these are all sort of spontaneous media uh, that you have to take and get the, the feeling for it. And so this is really quite, quite good. Uh, and the, one of the points that is difficult with something like this is again, this is values. Is even with a pen, you can get a sense of the contrast and the vitality with the way the pen was put down. And of course, uh, they didn't have our kind of fountain pens, stuff like that. They either work with a quill or a stick. And it gives you a whole different sense and sensibility to things. But these are really, really, really nice drawing. It has, really has the feel to it. Yeah. And I, again, just like what we were talking about before, you just you gotta you gotta do it five hundred times. Yeah. Most of the time, yeah. the one point that most people uh, forget when they look at old master drawings, they usually weren't done just for the sake of doing the drawing. They yeah. were, they didn't they didn't do drawings just to do drawings. They was always had a project that they had in mind. So these are working drawings. This is what they are. Yeah. Okay. So uh, maybe I'll I'll take the next one, Miles. You can give us the last word if you don't mind. Uh, can you zoom out? Thank you. That was really that was really great feedback. And I, I like the way you talked about at the end um, the intention of the drawings because now with social media we have this enormous pressure to feed the algorithm. We got to algorithm. I got to feed my Instagram. I got to post. I got to post. And because of that, you know, I think we end up showing our sketches. We showing kind of the behind the scenes. But when we're studying these masters, for the most part, I mean, there were presentation drawings, Durer did those, Michelangelo did those. But for the most part, you know, these are drawings with intent. And I think that when you're drawing with intent, um, the decisions are made differently. And um, I do recommend that. So if, you, if you're a student right now and you're doing a lot of sketching and floating figures on the page, floating heads on the page, it's useful to try something a little bit out of your comfort zone, like try a multi-figure composition. And maybe you're looking at some of your figure drawings and trying to put them together. Maybe you're working from imagination, but trying to challenge yourself and actually set the bar a little further will help you make breakthroughs that maybe you wouldn't make if it was just like grinding. And uh, we talk about this a lot on Discord, but I think lately, especially like in the last 10 years, um, I call it the cult of grind, but on the internet, especially with young artists, there's been this idea that we need to grind, grind, grind. We got to draw, you know, hundreds of boxes and then we have to draw, uh, you know, hand after hand after hand. And then we have to do posterization studies again and again and again. And I just want to make sure that um, that students realize that there is a, there's supposed to be a point to this. Like we're trying to make art. We're trying to make imagery, you know, th and try to keep the, the, the end goal in mind as you work, because it's easy to fetishize or get um, obsessed, even with, you know, uh, master studies. So Miles in his interview, this hasn't been released yet in his, in his uh, interview for our podcast that's going to be coming out soon. Uh, Miles, you talked a little bit about, um, about specifically a draw. You talked about intent. You talked about, I'm trying to remember the exact way that you, you phrased it, but um, yeah, I'm trying to remember the exact way you phrased it. I don't remember but, either. <laughs> maybe, yeah, I don't, I don't want to misquote you because that'll come out, but uh, you were talking a little bit about uh, intent and I thought it was really interesting, but um. Just, just coming back to these pieces for a minute, uh, I agree with the with the critiques Glenn had. I think that I really like your your Leonardo studies. 
uh, for me, this was why I thought that you should be uh, one, of, one of the winners here is because um, I love the way you got a sense of these drawings. Like th these drawings are fantastic. And speaking about drawing for a purpose, when we're looking at these Leonardo's, in my interpretation, looking at a house cat, probably looking at a cat like in his studio, and then he is trying to morph it into a weasel, into a sheep, into two mice fighting like in a fist fight and a brawl. And he's he's taking something he is observing and then he's trying to extrapolate it for artistic purposes because, you know, he might have a painting where there is, you know, Daniel and the lions or a battle between, you know, uh, people and lions and, or tigers. And so this idea of, of trying to use drawing in order to advance our study, I think is really interesting. I really like your Leonardo studies. Uh, I agree with Glenn. I'm sure Miles will have more to say on the, on the Rembrandt. Um, so I'll let him say that. Um, speaking about like improving on the original, when it comes to the, the cats on the left, um, I do think that could have happened. Like you probably could have tried to, because these are, to me, these are obviously observations. Like these aren't imagination drawings. You know, he's recording shapes. Um, it's, it's probably, they're probably relatively quick because the cat's moving, you know, most of the time, I mean, again, Miles could probably speak to drawing cats as well, but most of the time the cat is, looks like it's just lounging about being a cat. And so probably in my estimation, he was trying to record these shapes quickly, but at the same time, the form could be stronger. The volumes underneath could be stronger. Maybe the, the anatomy could be a little bit stronger. And so don't be afraid to kind of push it a little further because um, you've got the drawing in front of you, you know, and that can actually be a more sophisticated way to approach a master copy. Like what, what is weak about it and what could I improve and getting past the idea that this is blasphemous. What do I know? I think we, we need to be able to do that to the, to the master work because the truth is they can always be improved. There's no such thing as perfection. And even the greatest artists that ever lived, we can improve on that. So in the cat drawing, I think you probably could have done that a little more, push the forms a little more. Um, so did you want to have any, do you have anything to, uh, to add to this miles about what worked and maybe what could be improved with Svetlana? Uh, you know, honestly, uh, not much. I feel like it would be redundant. So I'll be brief about it. Um, in terms of improvement, the Jericho feline studies, the only thing that I, I guess I could say is, I mean, it's such a beautiful page. These are all worth like saving. I hope you save them. Um, I, I would have liked to see a little more value being the value range being pushed a little bit more um, specifically into the darks. And that's nitpicking. You know, I'm going to be nitpicky right now because it's strong work. So there's not there's not a whole lot I can ramble on about. But I would have said um, a little more value because just when I squint my eyes at it, it, it just feels very uh, uniform all over. Uh, again, though, it's it's a, it's such a wonderful page. Um, and I, I will just say briefly what I the reason why your Rembrandt sketch jumped out at me so much, your copy, is due to the fact that you, you've really kind of uh, channeled that freshness and that um, letting the medium kind of behave the way it's going to be without exerting too much control. Because it's really easy as a student. It's easy for me even. Um, I mean, we're all students, like people keep reiterating. But it's really easy for us to try to uh, oppress a drawing and like force you know, so much um, control over it. And so I just, I was really, I was really pleasantly surprised to see, uh, just how loose you allowed yourself to be. And I'm sure you're being very, you know, at the same time, faithful to the original, but I just wanted to give you props for that. Cause that was uh, really, really nicely done. Um, so, but yeah, I, I, I think Glenn and Joshua, you guys have pretty much said anything of importance. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. Okay, wonderful. So congratulations, uh, Svetlana. And just for everybody who's, uh, who is a winner of this challenge, you're going to be contacted by somebody via Discord um, in order to arrange to get you your, your prizes and your, uh, and your Discord role. So yeah, congrats. I think we can move on to the, uh, the next one now. And then just to mix it up so that we're changing the order, I think um, I'll start this one actually, and then maybe we can go to uh, uh, Miles and then Glenn, if that works. So, okay, so I guess we've got our first place winner here for the um, quality of analysis category. And that is actually this person won first place for our first challenge. So I think this might be, I might be wrong, but this might be the first time that he's won uh, twice and in the first place role twice. So this is Anissa. Uh, congratulations, Anissa. I think that um, all three of us, I think, were blown away. We went to our judging meeting already started 
you having you earmarked because of the quality of the work. Um, I'll let uh, and Glenn into a little bit more, but I'll say just that I like like this is a really great application. So working to, working on a tablet. The source material that you're studying is traditional drawing, and so many of the things that I don't like about uh, digital work, the look of it, I think affected for. And so I think it's a really good use of the of the media in this case, digital. I did a great job, and um, I really love the Vilpu study on the left. This is a study by a drawing by Glenn Vilpu when I was starting out. I also copied this drawing. I know how incredibly difficult this is, but in particular, what I like about all three of your is that. I can see that you're trying to do it in the way that you think the, the artist did it. So with the Glenn, with Glenn's, like I've seen master studies posted uh, by people, you know, sometimes really good artists or really notable artists, and they'll post a master study and they point about it with straights, like treating it like an academic study. So they'll do that to like a Michelangelo um, or they'll do that to, you know, um, another, an, another drawing where the artist originally was not working that way. So in the case of the Vilpu and the Leonardo and the Michelangelo, it's obvious you're not doing that. You're trying to build the volumes. You're trying to draw in the way that the master did. And I think that's exactly the kind of analysis that everybody should be doing. Um, they also happen to be very accurate, but um, for the most part, not every single line is in the right place. And I think that is that sort of what this is what a successful master study looks like to me. And so um, maybe, uh, Miles, you can uh, you can add to this. Uh, yeah, I guess yeah, sure. Uh, again, uh, congratulations. These are these are really beautiful. It was, it was a tough choice, honestly. Um, our phone call went a lot longer than I expected. <laughs> but um, the 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 first drawing, especially the 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 back, is anatomically such a difficult region to navigate um, for any artist. It, it just there's so much going on, so many different layers and structures, and the how dynamic they are and they move. It's so difficult. It's really hard to actually express that enough. Um, so in a lot of ways, I suspect if you're doing this challenge that you're kind of drawing in the dark. You're just kind of following the copy, the master copy. You're you're not necessarily, you know, a, a seasoned artistic anatomist, you know, whatever title you want to give yourself. Um, so I was just really, really impressed that you were able just to kind of faithfully follow along. And I think for that reason, when, when we put you in the... Um, analytical uh, quality of analysis category just felt like you were you probably learned a lot from this back study um, I'm sure that there was a lot of rhythms and a lot of forms that maybe you had an anatomy book next to you I don't know how you guys did this but um, it just seemed just from the quality of uh, of the drawing and, and the copy that I suspect you learned so much so for me that's kind of what tipped you into first place here um, and as for the others again I just I just think that uh, it's very clear that you put a lot of mental effort into getting inside the mind um, of the artist. Uh, I might need a second uh, to think about improvement. Um, I don't know if maybe Glenn, you'd want to <laughs> chime in about that since it's your drawing. <laughs> well, actually, the one of the things that I was surprised that uh, he actually came through because <clears throat> one of the what. When I'm drawing, I'm also thinking of the abstract. And so that the way of the being able to maintain some of those uh, long curved and complex areas against each other, that's what's where the fun is. And so when I look at it back, yeah, I take and approach the anatomy with a sort of, uh, okay, I should make it accurate enough to it doesn't, in, I, so I'm not going to insult myself <laughs> or, or embarrass myself, I should say. I try, but I want to use it. I use the anatomy to take and create the movement and the forms that I do. So this, I think is yeah, really it did it did really well in, in terms of maintaining the abstract and the realism at the same time. It's an excellent job. Yeah. At first, I looked at it, huh? I'd like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I guess before we move on, since um, we want to give a little bit of feedback, like these are so successful. 
that this probably is getting nitpicky, like Miles was saying. But I do think that um, not so much with the with the Villapu, I think he did a pretty good job getting the the values. But with the with the Leonardo, with the Michelangelo, I think that the overall control of the value and also um, pushing certain areas to bring them forward more contrast. I think you could probably spend a little more time with those. If you look at the Leonardo's like, he was so great at using a very thin, very controlled line, but he could also be very dark and build up value where um, of all the parts of the analysis, which are all really good, I think that's probably one of the areas that you could uh, focus on, like maybe back away from the back away from the drawing or back away from your screen and just make sure that um, you're getting the, the right the right value. Because in, in the case with the Michelangelo, um, I taught myself to draw uh, when I first started, before I uh, studied with Glenn or with anybody else, just by copying all of these Michelangelo drawings from this uh, these facsimiles that I, I got from the uh, Casa Bonarotti. So I actually copied every Michelangelo drawing there is, except for the architecture ones. And so all of these ones are like old friends that I'm returning to when I see them. And one thing about um, the Michelangelo drawing, but this one in particular is that you know he's really controlled with this value and he it, it, he appears to build up the darks over time you know because he's designing he's making this up and he's also making some some of these forms advance and i think focusing a little more on that uh would be a good next step for you uh did you guys have any uh constructive feedback to offer before we before we move on from anissa's yeah, I could actually. I just uh, in my own separate window, I just brought up that uh, Michelangelo drawing specifically. Um, and what I'm noticing from his original, which we're looking on a computer screen, it's like not ideal. But uh, looking at the third image here, um, I just don't get a sense of the cross hatching having a, a real deliberate sensitivity that Michelangelo does. And again, Joshua was talking about a building of value and cross hatching is very much a way that we build value delicately and slowly in, in a lot of time. I mean, sometimes we scribble really hard, but he was very sensitive about the way he's going to build his value. I don't really see that happening here. What I see here is a translation of a value, right? So you're translating, you're squinting your eyes perhaps, and you say, this is this is like a, a dark or light or whatever. But what you're not doing is you're not building that value in this very um, designed sense, right? Like I'm not seeing these beautiful patterns of cross hatching taking place in your drawing. So I think that you missed an opportunity in that respect um, to to uh, treat the the drawing with that same degree of uh, analysis, even though you're winner of the analysis. I know that maybe that sounds uh, contrary, but um, I, I would say on that that very very minute level, that would be a greatest area that you could achieve a lot of improvement with this particular drawing, um, especially is just really really look at the delicate line work and get into that and. Just as as practice, you know, try to go through the motions. Maybe you don't understand necessarily why, or maybe it seems like there it's not a, a good lesson for you. But it, you just got to trust us when we say that if you go in there and you just follow along, just just play the music the way it was written, you know, in that sense, and and you'll learn a lot. So uh, that would be you know my little critique of, of this one. I'll leave it there. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up, Miles, because that seems to be like the least common approach to drawing nowadays. You know what I mean? Like it's very much like, especially in realism, it seems to me it's very much like shadow shape, graphic, and then um, just getting the two values to work and then treating edges. Whereas a lot of the the masters, like you said, they were they were every single line is following the form. Every is pushing the design and that kind of mastery that's something that you know we don't really see that that often and so i think that's really good advice to to start you know diving deeper because she's got gestures and shapes she's got a lot of that stuff working but to really see if you can build it in that way and seeing that result um glenn did you have anything to add in terms of constructive no, uh, it's funny because i just this uh, literally i mentioned earlier that i spent a couple of hours drawing from a, an old master and who happened to be a friend of Michelangelo's and uh, Piombo, uh, 1480, Sebastiano del Piombo. And it's very interesting because he was a good friend of Michelangelo's. In fact, uh, he, Michelangelo tried to get him to compete with uh, Raphael to get Raphael out of the way. <laughs> 
But anyway, uh, when you look at the two drawings, and this is one way I think you can study, is study people that were really related to each other artistically. And how the one in many senses did copies after the other, and they worked together and to see the common thing, the uh, thing that's going through. And so, and I look at and exactly what Miles was saying that Piombo's drawing was this very, very careful built up of values of cross hatching and building up the form. And it's a beautiful drawing and it's a tonal quality to it. So you see the differences also in one of the things that they were friends. So I think that the Michelangelo actually probably picked up some stuff from him is that he was a Venetian artist who came to Rome as a young man. And so he was, had been a student of Giorgione, which is a tonal, it's a, a poetic approach to things. And so we see this tonal quality. And I look at the Michelangelo and I see, particularly in here, the technique and the way he built, there's a lot of similarities to it. And, and, and we see we see this thing. So yes, I look at the thing, what I would doing a copy from this, I would be looking at the composition, not worrying so much about the technique. Uh, that's not what would have been interesting to me doing the copy. But if I'm studying the technique and studying to see how he actually did it, I try to look more carefully at how he did it just for what we've been talking about. What was the thinking process? These are working drawings. How did he work? How did he work? And why did he work that way? Yeah, and it, it's interesting. I think this is an excellent job though. But I, I, I agree with Miles that the building of the tone, the way it was done, it wasn't a quick five minute sketch. <laughs> you know? a lot yeah. of a lot of thought, and it wasn't, and this wasn't the first drawing that he did for that. He did it <laughs> many times. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, this question has come up from students uh, in particular, and sometimes they'll say something, something along the lines of, I know I'm supposed to study Michelangelo. I know I'm supposed to look at these great masters, but I don't get it. Like, I don't see it. I don't like the aesthetics, or it doesn't appeal to me. Am I missing something? Am I, is this a matter of taste where it's just like these artists are um, in a certain tradition popular or is there really like something objective that is superior from a technique standpoint? Like, is this Tiger Woods or is this just like a matter of taste? And um, when Miles was talking about building up these, these values, um, I do think to a large degree, there, it, there is, it, objective isn't the right word and nothing in, in art is, but when you try to do it and you realize how difficult it is, that is something that is almost measurable. You know, like you'll probably notice the sergeants and the Soroyas much easier than this drawing right here to do than the Michelangelo's. And there are good reasons why. It has to do with how the drawings are made. And so most drawing techniques, academic, illustration, most drawing techniques on the rotational side are something along the lines of we've got like an outer shape, you know, and then we've got a core shadow, which is essentially just a line. And then we handle the edge work between the two. That's a very like shorthand, direct graphic approach. That's not what a lot of these old masters were doing, though. They're, it is, at the end of the day, a matter of values. And when we look at it on our screen, it's just dark and light pixels. But the way they built it up, they're encoding it with much more design, much more information. And there is a difference between a Dürer and a Michelangelo. And then let's say our favorite artists of today, or even like our favorite illustrators, let's say of the last hundred years. And this is much more difficult with raw because you have to be able to realize. And then as Glenn was saying, it is iterative, right? But also this is from imagination. Maybe it's from wax models that Michelangelo would have made. But it's a big difference. He's not taking a photograph here. Like, all right, everybody, is everybody in pose? And then he snaps a photo and then he transfers it to his canvas. And then that's not the way that they were working. And so um, in order to be able to develop that skill, you have to be like, you can't get the, a lot of artists today, like they want to get the aesthetics of an old master. 
without going through the process. And I don't think that's possible because the end look of the drawing is a result of the mentality and of the approach. You can't just do your drawing the way you're doing it and then put some cool looking hatches on it and call it a master drawing. Like there's much more going on. And so as much as possible, when you study these masters, try to unlock that. But I really appreciate, like there was a really good advice that was coming from, from Glenn and uh, Miles. I appreciate it. Um, just in, in the interest of time that we should move on, congratulations, Anissa. We're going to move on to our next category, which is challenge slash ambition. So just to clarify, we wanted to reward students who really tried difficult um, examples here, who really challenged themselves. Uh, Anissa's last piece definitely was that Michelangelo was definitely one of the harder ones. There's so many figures. It's so difficult. But um, our, our first winner, which is our third place, um, is, is uh, Birgit is the winner. And uh, congratulations, Birgit. I, I do remember you from the New Masters Academy forums. I remember you did a 100-day challenge. And so I'm really happy to see you, you winning this one. Uh, Elizabeth, are we? It looks like we're still looking at Anissa. I see, I see uh, on my screen Birgit's work. Oh, maybe I'm getting, oh, I'm sad. This might just be me. So, um, yeah, uh, Glenn, do you want to start us off a little bit about what we liked about uh, or what you what you liked about uh, Birgit's work? Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, Domier is one of my favorites. And people are always surprised because I'm always talking about Domier. He says, but, but what's this Michelangelo drawing? And you're talking, you know, you're talking about this scribble drawing. <laughs> <laughs> and Domier is great. And so to, that's quite a challenge to taking and doing the Domier drawing there where you're getting all these different characters and stuff. It's really pretty damn nice. And, and the difference between one head to the next is pretty good. Again, it's one of those, just like we've been talking, it's hard, it's hard to take and capture the, that sort of spontaneity, spontaneity that the, his drawings were done with. And because they're basically, these are compositional studies that he would take and he was, he's a political cartoonist. He was really pointing fingers at all of these uh, attorneys and making, but there was a story to it. And that's what you get. You look at it and I can see, yeah, there's the story. You can see, you can see the guys, how, how they're going. You can see the guy with his hat off, not feeling too happy. And the guy over on the left-hand side saying, hey, I, I really aced it there, <laughs> you know? And anyway, but that's pretty good. And then you're looking at the, at the Albert Durer. I, I think we all looked at that and said, wow, that's pretty good. And like we've been talking, the way the line worked, and the way the way the, the quality of the control that we had in achieving that that was really nice and then we've already been talking about the michelangelo so uh there uh, uh, everything we said but the, the other one could probably apply but uh, they're pretty darn nice and so uh, i look at all three of these things and they're really well done this is excellent by taking and doing it. Okay, hey, that's <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, a fantastic work. Um, yeah, I just wanna add that. So in terms of this one, I think the one that stuck out to me also was the Damier, just because you've got uh, color here, there's so many faces and it's in a very unforgiving media. And so if you mess one of them up, you probably have to start again, which I think was, uh, that was really the thing that impressed me. I think that's the reason it's here. I also wanna say like, I've been following your progress on the new Masters Academy forums and now on Discord. And one of the things I'm really blown away by is your uh, ability to improve. Um, I think if, if you look at the first stuff that you posted to our forums, maybe a year ago, versus uh, the more recent work, it's clear to me that you're improving, you're internalizing these concepts, you're getting better. And that's just exciting to see as an educator. Um, and uh, I just wanna say fantastic work. I think that um, the Damier study was probably the strongest, the Michelangelo one, maybe you could have done that a few more times. It's extremely challenging, but uh, working a little bit more with the gesture, working a little bit more with the form, uh, I would have liked to have seen as much 
there that in the doer as in the Michelangelo? I mean, the other way around. I would have liked to have seen you put as much care in the Michelangelo studies you did with the doer, but definitely the Daumier uh, uh, carried it for us. So I just want to say, yeah, uh, congratulations. Keep keep studying form, keep studying construction, keep studying anatomy, and um, and and work on the lightness of your touch because with the doer. Uh, We'll, we'll see we'll see this drawing come up again but when you're running lines over the form it's very easy to give all of those lines the same value and that becomes a little bit less expressive so just because it's a linear drawing doesn't mean that we can't use accents and control value and move the eye and in order to do that i think you're going to have to lighten up on your on your touch a little bit um did, miles do you have something you'd like to say about beer gates work here Sure. Um, I, I can't, I don't know if I can necessarily speak for uh, the New Masters Academy exactly about this particular category, but it is the challenge ambition category. So I think we were trying to reward people that we really notice you're stepping outside your comfort zone and you're really attempting work that's far beyond, you know, where you're at right now as an artist. And I don't think that's a bad thing to admit about oneself. I mean, that's what we're always trying to do, right? Was we're always trying to uh, push our own limits. And I really, we really felt like in this set, that's exactly what was taking place. We really believed that you, you chose some of the more challenging drawings uh, that were offered. And it, you know, you struggle with some of the things here. Um, but just, I think the determination that the work shows and how far that you were able to take it. I think that's why we were so happy to include you in this set. Um, the Daumier, like, I mean, I'm just kind of now reiterating, I, I love Daumier. He's one of the first artists that really got me into printmaking back in college. And I, I found that I loved his drawing so much because it's a singular voice. It's really hard to find another Daumier, right? It's, it's kind of like one of those voices in music or something where it's like, why try to sing like this person professionally? And it's just like, you're not going to fill that niche. Um, but it, it was it was so ambitious of you. I think, like Joshua had said, there this is a difficult medium. Um, you're using color and, and it's water based, and there's a lot of line work and things like that going on. So it's not easy at all. And I I was just really really uh, enjoyed looking at that copy. Um, I think it was the only Dalmier copy that we were shown, right, Josh? Is that am I wrong in that? Yeah. You're muted, Joshua. I think. I think it might have been the only one that made it to like the finalist round where we, oh, okay. where we had okay. it. Uh, All right. But so, yeah, it was a lovely set of drawings uh, for improvement. I think it's fairly obvious to everyone um, that, especially with the juror in, in the Michelangelo, uh, the improvement is fairly obvious just to keep drawing, keeping sensitive to your line weight, to the directions of your lines, what they mean, um, contours. Really, sometimes it just helps to compress things down to a flat shape mentally to help you kind of uh, extract what the real form will be. So I could see that in the Michelangelo copy, that that would be one area that you could improve. Uh, and in the Durer, a lot of um, kind of abbreviation of some of the line work, uh, it, it's so fine and it's so intricate that it's really easy you know, to get lost in it and to get overwhelmed. But again, I was really happy to see you trying so hard and and getting in there and doing doing as much as you can, but I still see a lot of abbreviation taking place and smudging. You know, this I would I would recommend. Um, hold on, let me bring it up. Can you bring the Durr up for me, please, Elizabeth, as a single yeah. image? Miles, do you think that she should have uh, tried that in ink? Hey, I that's it, it looks that's exactly that's exactly what I was about to say. Uh, Thank sorry, you. Just um, on your no, 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 you didn't know. So, like Joshua said. You're doing a copy. Try to do it in the in the medium that was done in the first place. You know, it's always okay, like to do whatever you want, uh, do more iterations in different mediums. But uh, for the purposes of this challenge, I think it would have benefited you to try to use only ink, because then you would have been forced to try to find some of these values using line work instead of kind of. Uh, working your way around that and, and relying on some kind of tonal value taking place. Um, so that would, again, th that's, that's my room for improvement, but uh, really, really well done as a good set. Yeah, I'd like just to add to what everybody's been, been saying, <clears throat> like a sort of advice, Michelangelo famous advice. He was asked by a, a, a young artist 
for some advice. And Michelangelo said, draw. <laughs> and then he said, is any further advice? Draw and don't waste time. Yeah, Glenn, I don't know if you know this, but our master box has that in the cover. It says, draw, Antonio, draw, and don't waste time. <laughs> yeah. And the other, the other, probably the, the most great, famous uh, Apelles was the most famous Greek artist. And then one of the words that come down from him, he says, never a day without a line. So, so it's really, you draw. And whether you're drawing from something, or well, in reality, or you're taking and drawing from photographs, doesn't make any difference. Draw, but use your brain because that's what drawing is: is thinking. Yeah. And with theory. That's and fantastic. It, the old man's lecturing. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely appreciate it. Well, congratulations, Bitter Gates. Please keep learning. Um, yeah, you've got a tenacity. You're not going anywhere. You just keep improving. And I'm excited to see where this goes in the future. So let's go ahead and move on then to our second place winner for the challenge uh, ambitiousness category. And is, if we can just bring it up. This is uh, Vibhav. I hope I'm saying that right. But this was, I think this was the only other uh, challenger that won using digital, I believe. Um, but uh, yeah, congratulations. These are fantastic. We, there was a lot of discussion about these pieces, if I recall. Um, I know, Glenn, you just went uh, last time. Miles, do you want to start us off with, uh, with talking about uh, this work? Sure. Yeah. Um, so I, I think the second image in the middle here, uh, we noticed that this particular drawing was giving a lot of students difficulty. It was just kind of like crushing a lot of work. Um, there's a lot of things about this particular orientation of the head that it makes it quite difficult uh, for people to conceive it conceptually before they draw. Um, we, we, we could spend hours talking about that particular topic and you know put on our professor hats or whatever, but just trust us when we say this particular gesture of the head, this is, is incredibly difficult for some reason. Um, uh, but we, we found that, that uh, Vi Viabov really nailed it. Just um, it really stood out. It was really successful. Not only does it contain kind of the egg-like qualities that a lot of artists like to conceive of the skull, but it also has a very solid like block. It, it's hard to describe it, but it, it's really navigating uh, the structure of the of the face and the skull and the cranium underneath it. It was very well done. And the Proudhon as well, we were noticing that there were a lot of Proudhon co uh, copies and and, and Vibov, yours uh, had a sensitivity to it um, that we really enjoyed. It, it just, it, the craftsmanship was really strong with it. Um, the contour lines were very sensitive. I, I, I personally was finding a lot of moments in this drawing that were absent in some of the other copies. So it, it stood out in that way. Um, I would say though for improvement, I mean, again, we could just, we, we could talk a lot about how much we love each one of these drawings. Um, but for improvement, I'm wondering now that we've brought up that this are, this is digital, I'm, I'm wondering if it would work to your benefit to try working in a traditional media um, as well. And the reason why I say this is there's a lot of crutches that are found in digital mediums mainly the i don't really use it so i think it's command z or whatever undo is and i i just suspect you know if you're working in digital that there's a lot of undo that's taking place especially in the second one i think that happened because it is so clean um which is pretty extraordinary to do with like uh, like chalk or something on paper it just it's so unforgiving so i would say that for improvement why not take on that challenge of using a traditional media where you really don't have that undo button, where you cannot step back, where you have to plan ahead and think and anticipate how your medium is going to behave. And not only that, but how to, uh, like little things, like how do you keep the tip of your pencil sharp all the time? You know, like little things like this, that for anyone who's a craftsman, because this is the craftsmanship category as an artist if you're working in traditional medium you're doing well, actually, a lot of actually actually no i don't think this is craftsmanship sorry to interrupt you I, oh craftsmanship we, 
Peter Keith. I think oh, this I'm is sorry. challenge. Yeah. yeah. This oh was, my god, this, my nose. This was challenge. I'm sorry to oh, interrupt. No. But... <laughs> well, shame I mean, on me. All, all of these categories are so interrelated. You know what I mean? Yeah. A little bit of... Start over. <laughs> shame on me. Well, a lot of the stuff uh, that I think I said, I wouldn't change anyway, but I'll tailor it to a uh, challenge. Um, I think the second one, I think I was saying it's challenging, right? So there you yeah. go. It, it was a really nicely done execution of something really challenging. Um, but so take whatever I just said, take it out of the craftsmanship category, put it back into the challenge. And um, I think it'll all still make sense because they, they <laughs> these are lovely executions of very challenging works. But um, in terms of improvement, I would say try to work in the traditional mediums um, because you will find that it'll slow you down a little bit. And we can already see how detail oriented you are and how sensitive you are visually. And I think that'll only enhance your abilities. So sorry about that uh, confusion. Yeah, um, so I'll jump in for the next part here. I think one thing that struck me about these three images is that uh, everything we've seen so far, there's been like the strongest of the three that the uh, challenger has done. And then there's been like a weaker one um, for the most part from what I noticed. But these ones are pretty consistent in terms of quality. I mean, Miles has a point, digital is easier. You know, it's not just undo, right? That's part of it, but also just layer do a layer, throw it away, do a layer, throw it away. You can do that traditionally too, but it's not, it's not quite as easy. So I don't know how much work went into these. Just looking at them, I agree with Miles, probably a lot. Um, I think you actually on your Instagram, I was just stalking you the other day. It looks like you, po you posted your video process from Procreate for the uh, Prudhomme stuff, which is nice. Like we do a little research sometimes trying to make people sure people aren't cheating and also making sure that, you know, uh, everything's kosher. But um, I did notice that, you know, in this uh, Prudhomme, you, and I do the same thing myself when I work in Procreate, but you shrunk the head down, you rotated something, you moved things around, and that is not as easy to do in, uh, traditionally. And so I actually want to agree with uh, Miles's recommendation. And I'm sure you've done traditional, like you don't get this good just doing digital probably. Like it looks to me like you do have traditional background as well. But I, I do agree. This would, I mean, these would be amazing. These are amazing drawings, but they would be amazing if they were on paper. You know what I mean? Like you could frame these things and put them on the wall, even as master studies. I think they're beautiful. So I would also like to see that. Um, I liked in the Prudhomme, um, the 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 design especially in that in the weight bearing arm you know like i see bridgman there i see vilpu there i see a lot of uh good practice uh applied there in some cases in the prudon a little bit more than than the original uh, had and um yeah so overall just a fantastic job on all three of these um like one thing that I might like to see a, a little bit uh, more of is like the grooves, this, this grooves one in the middle, like this was like the Widowmaker. So many people, I think this is one of the reasons we were thinking the challenge. So many people like choked on this one because it's linear, like Dürer lines are running over the surface, but it's also tonal. And that is so difficult to do because um, it's easy to do a linear, not easy, but you can do a linear drawing or you can do a tonal drawing, but to make the lines add up to something tonal, very few artists, I think, in history have been able to do that masterfully. And so you did a great job here. I'd like to see you continue that and maybe take these lessons that you learned in these studies and try to apply them from life or try to apply them from imagination. Um, in terms of the challenge, I really like how you chose three different styles. Uh, and in each one, I thought you did a pretty good job of, of capturing that. I think you did a really great job. But um, so I would like you, I would like to see you do more, you know, and um, you know, like in the Prudhomme, maybe the hands could have gotten some more love, regardless of what the original looks like. The feet could have gotten a little bit more love, maybe. Um, there, You could maybe have thought about how to bring that knee that is closest to us, how to make that advance. Again, regardless of what you notice in the Prudhomme, because the knee that's coming towards us, it has like the same exact contrast and emphasis as the leg that's sort of further behind. I, I would think about maybe there's something you can the drawings are very three-dimensional, but how can you that even more? How can you make some things advance and some things recede? And I think part of that can be value control. Part of that can be how you're uh, hitting your overlaps. Uh, I think keep working on that. And, uh, and, you know, I know you're really active on the, on the New Masters Academy Discord. I know you're one of our, you're one of our power students. Um, really excellent job. Uh, great job here. And I'll, I'll pass to Glenn right now. Okay. <clears throat> 
Okay, now first of all, interesting because the Gru's drawings, he's, his drawings were used by the academy to copy from. And so what the, traditionally his drawings were, were bought, like for the Russian academy, they brought a whole series of his drawings because they couldn't get him to come to Russia, but they bought his drawings for the Russian academy students to copy. And it's important, I know working, I do a lot of drawing digitally and that what you sort of lose working digitally from copying from like an original is the scale of the drawing originally. Because Gruz's drawings were not small. They weren't the size of our screens that we work on. They were really quite large. And that Gruz himself would take and redo his drawings and use them in multiple paintings and things. So these were drawings that would be gone over. And you, when you look at the differences that he did to his own drawing, he copied his own drawings really well. <laughs> okay. And then I look at the, the same sort of idea with their Proudhon. Proudhon started out incredibly loose. He had all kinds of crosses of tone that he put down, and then he would stump things out. And he was highly criticized for doing that. Because the academy people thought that that was really bad form. <laughs> you don't build up, the, you don't start out like that and doing all this stumping. And yet, they're beautiful drawings. So you have to appreciate them. But again, we've mentioned many times now that understanding how did they do it? Well, when we're copying, it's hard. And particularly if you're working digitally to start out, you should, with the looseness and the freedom that he did to the thing. And then really, he didn't follow reality all the time. He changed it. Uh, for instance, if we look at, the, even at that uh, drawing there, look at things like, okay, look at the shadows. That's not, that's not real. <laughs> that's not yeah, he's real he's jump, jumping the light, right? Yeah, so it, 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 they're beautiful, the drawings are beautiful. Done. All three of them, the watercolor, that, that's tough. Uh, but again, if you're constantly working digital, you need to, you need to step back and exactly what Miles was saying. Take out a pencil. <laughs> They got a pencil yeah, or a pen and take out your watercolors and, and do it. Glenn, okay. Glenn, there's a few comments on YouTube about digital versus traditional. Do you want to say anything maybe specifically about, do you find, because I know you do both, I do both. Um, do you find digital easier than traditional? What advantages do you think there are for somebody who is working digitally to try traditional, or would you say vice versa? No, it, it, the, the hard part working digitally is, okay, first of all, I've been doing a, a lot of drawing digitally. And right now I'm taking and uh, doing it using 600 DPI setup. Okay, and I make a very large piece so that I have more control, but I'm not using layer. I take and do not use the layer as I try to. Well, first of all, when you're doing something sick, you don't have many layers. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say, when you go high resolution, but yeah, on my iPad, at least you don't get layers, really. Yeah. So, I, but not not using the layer is, 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 is I want to say, a crutch. It's a good tool. But again, just going through the process is, to me, it's convenient. I like to draw. I like. I really like to draw on the computer. I can draw in the dark. <laughs> okay, and you can work with. It. But at the same time, I was drawing. drawing those horses. I went down there with my iPad to draw the horses. I had to grab a pen and my sketchbook. <laughs> it's just different, and people say, "Well." I don't like to draw on the iPad. Well, you know, maybe you wouldn't like etching. It's different. It's just, it's a different media. It works differently. And I don't know if it's uh, some aspect, it's harder, some, uh, 
uh, some things it's easier. Yeah, but it's it's just different. I don't I don't think of them in those terms. You know, easier. It's it's just another uh, it's a, another form of uh, media that I work with that I enjoy working with. And so being better, easier. Eh, I don't think of it in those terms. Anyway. Well, yeah. Uh yeah, so I guess it also depends on how you're using digital too, Glenn, because as you talk about it, you drew, you know, for so many decades before drawing was even available that you came into the, the digital uh, realm already being mature. Craftsman, whereas if some, somebody is learning, might be going to, you, you, you might be a crouch, like maybe they're bringing up their reference perfectly, or maybe they're sampling colors, or maybe they're checking by overlapping this and that. And there's, there's so many ways that you can, you can basically do anything digitally. So um, interesting though, like are there, are the same things we say about drawing traditionally, do they apply digitally? I think for the most part there is yes. Like drawing is drawing. You do it with your mind, as you said, Glenn. It's not about, you know, the particular media you have, but you can take shortcuts and you can undermine your, progress you know like there's this idea of uh competitive versus cognitive skills where like something like a calculator is a competitive skill because if you start using a calculator you lose the mental ability to do arithmetic whereas something like it like an abacus is complementary in that people who become masters at using the abacus can do it in their head and they're able to actually um have more ability so i think just generally because this conversation it comes up all the time you know in our community but just generally, I think that no matter what medium you're using, you know, doing it the hard way <laughs> is probably going to build your mental skills more. It's not that not to say you always have to do it that way, but doing it the hard way is probably going. And you kind of know that, like, you know that, you know, when you're taking a shortcut. And so I think it's more of just like a it's, it's not an intuition, but it's something you have to just judge based on what you're doing. Like you can use and abuse any medium, I think, you know, and everyone has different ideas like using a projector, you know what I mean? To project a photograph of your reference onto the canvas. Is that cheating? You know what I mean? Is that uh, like, everyone has different opinions on, on where those on the uh, those borders are, but it's an interesting conversation. Maybe we should do a panel someday about this, but um, do we have anything more to say or should we just move on to this next one? Now, drawing, I, to me, uh, just one comment here is that it, these are just tools. That's all. The, uh, the iPad is just a tool. And it took me personally one solid year to get the whole control that damn pencil. <laughs> hey, Glenn, Glenn's an early for what those of you who don't know. Early How much time? Yeah. yeah. So, anyway, onward. onward. Okay, well. <laughs> yeah, congratulations, uh, Bob. Uh, you did fantastic work. We need more from you. And uh, let's go ahead and move to our first place. Now, this is first place under the Lynch ambitiousness category. Um, it's fun talking about uh, material and technique. This is a perfect example for us to talk about it. Um, yeah, so uh, we everyone submitted work in progress images, and we can't see it here, but what it looks like is that. Um, that Andre actually aided uh, uh, a technique for this first one, whereas the second ones were done with ink. Uh, Miles, start us off by talking about why this made it and how we feel about it, or from your perspective. Uh, uh, sure. Um, I think Josh, he brought up. You'd said we did a little research sometimes when we could about people's process, and I think what we found was there was this artist. Um, was actually making some form of a lino cut print or stamp for the first image on the left here, this turtle. Um, and so for me, when now that we're in challenge ambition, I'm not mistaken, um, that was just so awesome to me that instead of just copying the image, you know, translating into some other medium that this artist actually attempted that. And I'm sure they learned a great deal, learned a lot more than I, perhaps a lot of the other artists in, um, in this category. I, just 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 in the sense of actually going along the process of creating a print and whether or not um, maybe it's not a wood block or something, but uh, going through and actually cutting the pattern out and 
dissecting it down to its various, uh, you know, uh, individual plates and then registering all that together and all that behind the scenes work that goes into a very simple looking image. I just found that that, that showed the artist really has that extra, that they care a lot, that they, they're intrigued, that they're curious and they're interested and driven. And so for me, that, that was, that was something that really tipped the scales in this one. Um, and then with the other two, these are Hokusai's, right? I think that's what, um, again, they're they're deceivingly challenging. The simplicity belies the fact that there's quite a bit of experience uh, and mastery going on with these pieces. And we saw other submissions with Hokusai and they're all really beautiful. Um, so to that point, it just, it really felt like going that extra mile and going into the actual print physically printing something i just found that that deserved a slot in here if not for the first place slot um just going that extra bit of effort um so for for me that's what i wanted to speak most to uh is that 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 shows like a, a great deal of commitment to me yeah fantastic somebody on the chat just said this um i believe i believe this this oh yeah this person actually won another one of the challenges. So this is the second uh, challenger who has won before. So if that's true, maybe I have that wrong, but if that's true, uh, congratulations. Uh, yeah, fantastic work. Uh, Miles, did you have uh, something um, on the constructive side in terms of... Uh... Oh, improvement? Um, take, yeah. take that same ambition and apply it to these more complex pieces. Um, apply that same desire to you know, investigate a different medium because for me personally i used to be a sociology major and anthropology major in college and it was printmaking that brought me back to art printmaking is what got me started and took me on this course in life and i i loved it because of the process and because of all the stuff that goes behind it all the um preliminary work and all, you know all the labor that goes into it so i would say try try these other ones again because i think these were just drawn right joshua is that what we found that they were yeah just so the, uh, on the far left it was a and then it looked like just from the work in progress images that the the two the yeah the image were, were just done in, in ink and wash so i would say it's and it's exceedingly advanced i know this but I mean, why not? Like, why not try it? I mean, we're we're living in a time where a lot of us have a little more time on our hands. So why not try to get in there, do the drawing like you normally would, do it on a piece of paper, transfer that paper onto a lin linoleum block, glue it, whatever, then use your engraving tools, carve it out, um, you know, make sure everything is nicely registered, things like that. You don't have to have like a fancy press. There are ways around that of uh, just doing like pressings, you know, like a stamp. Um, but I would say, apply that same sort of investigation apply that to these two other more complex ones because i think that it'll be a lot of fun on it i mean it was really inspiring to see you doing doing the the linoleum print so i would try that in, in terms of like value or two because that's one thing we didn't talk about with digital but obviously if we're talking about fine art selling your work um there's no no contest you know something that's done traditionally can be at least currently in the market, is more likely to be able to be sold and have value than, than a digital print, for example. So it'd be interesting to see. I don't know if this artist is, is also doing this, but it'd be interesting to see maybe um, taking these techniques and using it to produce limited edition, you know, uh, prints that you can then and you can then sell as originals. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> if I can throw in a few words sure. here. Hokusai was the first artist I ever bought a book on. <laughs> Me too. Uh, I would I would suggest uh, for an improvement now okay making the print but with with Hokusai if you could take and because the way he drew holding the way he hold the brush it's different and to take and draw like Hokusai but draw your own characters there's the challenge and once you start to draw, use thinking of Hokusai, looking at Hokusai, and then drawing your own characters, you will start to understand Rembrandt even better. Because it's, it's amazing, it's amazing stuff. Uh, 
like I said, I have a whole shelf full of Hokusai back here. Uh, and I love his work. And it's so, uh, it's really inspiring to take and uh, look at his work and to see the, the inventiveness. And, but at the same time, understanding how he, how did he do that? How, besides making the print, because it didn't start out with as a print, it started out as a drawing. And what, because then it was transcribed and developed further. And how did he create form and what have you? And it, he's an amazing, amazing artist. That's why we, you know, that's why I got a whole shelf full of focus on. <laughs> anyway, probably more than anybody else. <laughs> Yeah, that's a uh, yeah, really fantastic work, Andre. Yeah, well, I think we we all agreed that the yep. what it went through to do this, pretty, yep. pretty, pretty, pretty much of a dedicated process. Yeah, yeah, yeah so uh, fantastic work. I, I don't know if some of you on Discord we mentioned this too, but we started acquiring the uh, Hokusai mangas. These like hundred and thirty year old. I'm not sure what they are, but these original rice paper. Uh, models that he would sell essentially is like a how to draw guide and there's 11 volumes there we started acquiring them we're going to be photographing these in high resolution and we're going to be putting them on the new masters academy image area and so if you are interested in, in studying some of these keep an eye out you'll be able to do uh, master studies we'll be taking them with our 100 megapixel camera because they're actually very small they're like on rice paper and they're like this big these tiny little tiny little books but we'll start putting those online it's pre-copyright so um, we'll be putting it online for you guys to study, but yeah, I, I think we all love artists. Um, I think you did a really great job, uh, capturing a lot of the movement and the sensitivity. Um, I think Glenn's right. Like the actual process, which, which you're not seeing here, you know, these were reproduced and, and sold. And so we're not seeing the sketches that preceded this. Uh, I'm sure you can find fragments and, and kind of piece together what it most likely looked like with a lot of these, I think. But this idea of like these direct gestural lines that go down and they move us and, and the precision with which, you know, everything is stated very clearly. Like there's a, one thing I love and I think you captured really well is there's a variety of curves. You know, there's not just one type of curve. There's not just one type of straight. You have like everything in between. And that sensitivity that Hakusai, Hakusai has for all of the variation of curves that we see in nature, I think probably one of the things that we can learn from him. And I think you did a fantastic job. Uh, cause, um, I, I'd like to see. I'd like to see more. I'd like to see you maybe using some of these techniques, like Miles said, in your own your own work. Because I, if you. You, I might be wrong about this, but if, if you're the artist I remember seeing, your typical work doesn't look like this at all. And so, you know, in art history, obviously the East influences the West, the West influences the East. Early Buddhist art was Hellenistic art that was carried over through the wars of uh, by Macedon and Alexander the Great. It goes back and forth. And then we had an article recently on Canvas about how the Impressionists were influenced by the Eastern artists. and this idea of noton that comes back and comics and back. So it's a fascinating interplay and the fundamentals of art um, are the things that are between different styles. And so try to, when you're studying a, a style of art that is not in the same tradition, maybe as what you're used to, try to key into that. And, and like Glenn said, think of ways that you'll be able to add this to your own work. And that, that'll be really exciting uh, for us to see going forward. Um, in terms of an actual critique, I know the, you did a fantastic job with these waves. Uh, some of the curves, I think, um, you, while very sensitive, there's a little bit of confidence, you know, that maybe you could have been uh, a little bit stronger in terms of like sp sp specifically the lines that are leading up, not the actual foam, but the lines leading. Um, that's something that, you know, the printmakers, Hakusai himself, this comes from a lot of experience. So I would say just continue experimenting the types of curves and um, just get more facility with it and just and keep these studies up. But uh, yeah, fantastic job overall. We were really uh, impressed. You've won a, a one scholarship to New Masters Academy. If you if you got a scholarship from last time, remember you can hold on to that or you can gift it as well as the Master Box and then the Miles' uh, uh, Jacle. So uh, yeah, congratulations. Um, and if nobody has anything else, I think we can move to the, uh, to the next category, which is craftsmanship. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, there's there's so much overlap, you know, um, 
between all of these, among all of these. But the craftsmanship, uh, we were really looking at um, execution of the drawing, you know what I mean? Like really bringing it all together, bringing the analysis, the, the drawing technique materials all together to create uh, a really strong drawing. And so our first winner is in place is C Chirona. Uh, Instagram is chi.bot. And um, I'll, I'll go ahead and start and then, and then, so these jumped out at uh, me way um, when I first saw them. I thought the tin Toretto on the low was fantastic. Um, really nice sensitivity. You know, it really feels, it has the feeling of the original case, which is really successful. This was one of the best studies of that Michelangelo in the center that, that then we saw. And in the feeling of it may be better than anybody else did in terms of that Michelangelo. And then the sergeant, you know, these are three different drawings. The two was really successful. Uh, in terms of my uh, critiques, I think that like in Toretto, the, the line that represents uh, the contact, this is obviously a study after Michelangelo by Tintoretto. So we're talking about doing master copies, you know, hopefully the is not lost on you that Tim Toretto studied Michelangelo because the masters studied each other. You know, that's one thing. If you can say what, what, what is one thing that many of the great masters of the past have in common, one of those things is that they studied each other. And so here you see that Michelangelo was the subject of a lot of studies by a lot of different artists. But um, yeah, so the Tim Toretto is fantastic. The line that is making contact with the ground is flattening the drawing out. Because if you look at how three-dimensional like the arm feels and then the knee that's thrown over when you go and put that harsh outline and just sort of tracing it you, you you lose your form and so that was uh maybe something you'd want to avoid i think the curves in the hair are really nice but you know when especially during the renaissance when you see these kinds of curves like those come with practice like you need to you need to like just getting those of S curves and making them come together. I think that's an area where maybe you could you could have worked a little more on. Uh, so of, of these three studies, I think the sergeant, while probably the easiest of these three to do the study on, I feel like maybe didn't get as much love as you spent on the other two. Uh, the sergeant, it does look a little bit, I mean, because the sergeants sometimes look flat, but this also looks flat. Um, so you don't want to carry the weaknesses from the drawing. You want to try to improve on them. So probably my guess is you spent more time on the first two and then the third. So I would say on the sergeant, you know what I mean? Working on trying to visualize the rib cage. Like I can't really sense the rib cage in here. You know, like the evidence of the rib cage on the left side doesn't really line up with the rib cage in the rear. And so if I try to imagine the volume in there, it's disconnected. So whether it's a master study or whatever, when you're drawing like one side of a form, Glenn, Glenn talks about this in his book and his courses, you want to think about the other side. So you never just draw like one side of the rib cage. You draw one side, you need to imagine, okay, where's the other side? And that's one way that you keep that continuity. I would have liked to see a little more of that. Also some of the hatching in the lower part of the drawing on, on the sergeant just sort of is just creating lines. You know, you want every line to describe the form or the movement or tell a story. You don't want lines that are just lines. And whether it's a master study or not, we don't want to just put some line there. And that's sort of what some of the lines in the near side arm and on the rear end sort of look like to me. But um, overall, fantastic work. Really love the Michelangelo. Really love the Tintoretto. Um, Glenn, would you mind uh, uh, adding to this and maybe talking about what you liked and what could be improved on? Yeah, it's, it's what you were saying with the sergeant, you're pretty much on. <clears throat> and that that's one of the things that's uh, difficult when you're copying is to take and approach it as if you were drawing from a model and to be able to take and follow through and see how the forms relate to each other like we were talking rib cage to the pelvis and that's what they were doing that's what the sergeant was doing and we tend to sort of lose sight you know what they were seeing as the problem and what they were trying to do. So, but that's a, it's a pretty darn good drawing. The only thing that bothers me on that one in particular is the foreshortened arm going away. That, that feels very awkward, particularly that huge hole in the elbow. 
and that that's that, it doesn't foreshorten very well. Um, but maybe Sargent had trouble with it too. Uh, and so we look at these things, and like the the, the Michelangelo thing, that probably uh, what we said, the, a lot of the same stuff. You have to build it up because the drawing was not a small little drawing originally. You know, it was pretty developed as a an idea for a large wall. And so uh, it's uh, pretty good. And then the one on the left. Now these are drawings that like Tintoretto, that they he actually had sculpture that they would take and work from and he had many drawings by him and his students uh, where they would take and go back and he would, you can tell the difference. Uh, the connoisseurship in drawing is the difference that you can tell from the master to the student. That's the authority. It's the decisiveness that the thing is put down with. But these are all these are all pretty good. Uh, and, you know, uh, I just see the the one on the, the the one on the left again. The fact that the line, that hard line on the bottom, it doesn't just doesn't feel right. <laughs> the, the, the figure it, it, it flattens it flattens the whole thing out. But the excellent, excellent shots. Uh, and when you look at, the, like I say, I, I, I have drawings of Tintoretto's where he's doing from the sculpture and then the students doing from the sculpture. The guys in the studio didn't always do a great job. <laughs> and they tried, but they, you know, they were still there's that thing. Even Tintoretto's sons, you can see the difference. Yeah. And so that's hard. That's a really hard thing. So these are excellent, really good, good shot. The sergeant won the arm really bothers me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, fantastic. Uh, Miles, do you have anything you'd like to add? Uh, yeah, sorry. So I was, uh, while you guys were talking, I was listening and um, bringing up those images online for myself. Just really wish we could see these things in person, right? It, it would make this so much more incredible. Um, but let me go over uh, real quick. I like that you um, were using, I feel like you were trying to get as close to the right materials as possible for these copies. Uh, that in terms, now that we're talking about craftsmen, that you chose to try to draw within the same family that each one of these artists were drawing in. So I think that really benefited you. The Tintoretto definitely, uh, again, I, I agree with Joshua. Um, this one really stood out when we were going over the examples. Um, it has it does have a really lovely quality i mean they're all very these are all very challenging images least least of all i think the sergeant i think josh i'm just kind of echoing that um but certainly tintoretto is uh deceivingly difficult to copy uh there's so much going on so much exaggeration so much topography in his drawings that he's really uh, taking liberties anatomically but um very difficult to kind of follow along with stuff like that um but I'll, I'll get to critique stuff because I'm realizing that's probably a little more important for our students right now. Uh, so starting with our Tintoretto, the notes that I just made looking at the originals, you drew yourself into a corner there. So I don't know what the size of the page you are working on is. I don't, I don't know any stuff like this. But I suspect that you didn't allocate enough space for yourself to complete the drawing. And what you wind up doing is you wind up compressing you know, each unit of the leg or it just it it becomes it just becomes a little bit uh, disproportionate at that point, but I can see that you tried to do it though in a way that you might want to you're trying to hide it a little bit so you're you're kind of shortening things just a little bit uh, incrementally, which uh, you know I do that stuff all the time if I'm like running out it's just kind of a natural thing that happens but what I would want to see you do again with this drawing is to remind yourself that you're working within a finite field of space on the page and plan ahead so that you don't do yourself the disservice of making a funny little shin there that's like the size you know smaller than his forearm because we can see that you're capable 
or that this artist is capable. I don't know if they're watching, but we can see that this artist is certainly capable of making that decision cognitively. It's just that as, there is, you just found this limit there. So that would that would be my little critique of that. That's what jumps out at me. Um, for the middle, the Michelangelo, uh, I, I what I noticed about this is there's such a, and this will kind of segue into the sergeant, there was such a devotion to the exterior contours of the figures, the silhouettes, that I find that there's room for improvement in the interior, uh, the forms, the shapes, you might want to say at this point, on the interior of those silhouettes. I feel like those they're not as strong as perhaps the observation of, let's say, like the Christ figure's thigh or something, right? Those flat shapes created by the silhouette, those are stronger. The silhouettes are stronger than those shapes that exist within the silhouette. So that would be a great room for improvement because I do see that you were quite, or the artist was quite sensitive about finding these moments, uh, fields of light. Like I'm noticing the bottom left, that thigh of the brick, that the individual that's laying with their head draped back, there's like a little shaft of light hitting the knee. I looked back at the Michelangelo and I was like, okay, this artist definitely picked that out and made a mental note to include that. The arm on the very, very right figure who's uh, just below the outstretched elbow, there's a, a figure like this. There's a little shadow on the shoulder and the forearm. Again, it's like these little shafts of light that are peeping through that this artist has captured. So I, I know that, you know, there's like a real strong attention to detail here. And I just want to see that applied a little bit more to the internal forms. For the third one, uh, the Sergeant, this is a really great copy. Again, these are such like wonderful examples. Um, we are really impressed uh, for the Sergeant. I will say the same thing was happening with this one that I think was happening with your Michelangelo. There was such a, a focus on the contour, the, the silhouette to get it right that winds up, what happens is that the line quality suffers. Cause I was looking at the original Sargent sketch and there's a lot more tone taking place, right? The Sargent is using tone to describe shape. He's just not relying on line to do it for him. And I'm very much the same way though. Like I'm like-minded like this. I'm such a line shape, like contour oriented person. I, I really took a lot of effort on my part to, to explore and really push form and tone other things like this, more sophisticated ways of describing shape. So I'd like to see that happen in the Sargent copy, especially in the face. There's some really hard lines that were were drawn in here that I think they're just at odds with the, the value of, of the face itself. These are detail lines that pop out that don't really serve a purpose to me because it's a little more powerful if the tone and the values are describing some of these nuances. And for what Glenn was describing, it did bother me too, that right arm that's foreshortened. And this is something that um, studying a little bit of anatomy along with your copies can really help because what you'll notice is that the little dimple of your lateral epicondyle is a little bit low in this drawing. And what that does is that makes the whole structure of that elbow seem a little wonky to us because we know that the tricep is gonna be inserting in a process right there of the elbow, that protuberance. Um, but because those two, be, because the shadow of that lateral epicondyle and the mass of that tricep, they're fighting against each other. That's why the foreshortening for us doesn't work so much because you're describing two different things, um, but they're not, they're not working in the same structure. You know, I'm, I'm kind of using a lot of the same words here, but these are things, uh, little nitpicky again, but to improve, I think it would help you more. We know that you, you've gotten um, your third place here, you know, congratulations and stuff. But uh, looking at things like this will really help you improve and, and get a lot better. So fantastic, though. Really love that Tintoretto. If you were to just chop off those knees, <laughs> I would love that drawing so much more because it, it is such a beautiful copy. So really well done, like a lot of work. Yeah, that's really good advice. I'm really glad, uh, Miles, that you mentioned the interior form thing, because that's what, that's one of the things that I think that most art done today is really weak inside the silhouettes. Because like I was joking around with a student when I did a critique before that, like if it's like a head, they'll pay attention to like the West Coast and then the East Coast. So you got California and you got New York and you got Florida, but then everything in between, they're treating like flyover country. There's like mm. no knowledge there. 
And just like that's an obnoxious thing to do <laughs> to talk about flyover country to people that live in those states, it's also, I think it makes for, for a weak drawing. Like the, the outer contour is just the plane changes that happen to be set turning away from us. Does that make them more important than the plane changes on the interior of the form? Well, you might say yes, but I think a lot of these shortcuts, you know, um, for example, we were talking about academic and illustrative shortcuts. If you treat the terminator as just a line, and then the, the left contour is just a line, the right contour is just a line, what you have is three lines. You know, you haven't actually achieved form yet. And I think that's really good advice that everybody should do is pay more attention to these forms in between. Like, tell, tell, if you look at even drawings of professionals of a head, you know, the eyes, the nose, and the mouth are pretty well observed. The ear might be. Everything between the ear and these features is just really weak. The, the planes don't turn. It's not in the right place. The distances get off. So I would highly recommend that everybody listening to this pay a little bit more attention to what's going on within and stop being so biased to the silhouettes. And I know Glenn says that all the time. I'm just reiterating. I'm going to add something to that, Joshua. This is a little antidote. I was, teaching, I was teaching a class and where I had a lot of academic type students and they were a little lost with me. <clears throat> but I, was, I had been talking exactly about what I can get to the interior of the form and do this and this and that. And his kid, and he was pretty young, and he had these lines going down the outside and then he started putting in tone from the top going down. I said, what are you doing? He says, well, I start with the envelope. I said, no, I'm not interested in the envelope. Give me the, give me, what, what are you writing about? You know? Post office has been defunded. Get out of here with your envelope. Forget the damn envelope, you know? Yeah, I, I think I think it's definitely, and we we do teach some uh, some of these academic approaches at New Masters Academy. I think it can be really useful for building accuracy as a starting point. You know, there's not there's nothing to say that if you start with these, like these outer contours matter. Obviously, I think the thing that we I think all three of us have this in common is just paying more attention to what's also happening on the interior. Is that is that a fair way to say it? You guys think? True. Yeah, you're right. You have you have to be able to do it all. There's no. Definitely. There's no this or that. <laughs> yeah, you know, and I think sculpture really helps. It's helped me a lot. I know Miles is a sculptor or has has done, you know, quite a bit of sculpting. And Glenn, isn't it true that you've done some sculpture as well? Yeah. Anyway, yeah. It's it's it, it's just well, you have to do it with feeling. It's not this or that. It's you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like yeah, it's like improv. It's yes and. Most of the advice is yes and, because people tend to take these comments and maybe it's the way we present it, but they take these comments and then it becomes like a, oh, this approach is better than that approach. You know what I mean? Like these aren't supposed to be shots fired. You know what I mean? Like New Masters Academy teaches several different approaches. We want to take the things that work, but certain approaches are going to tend to have areas that are less focused on. You know, if you're drawing more const constructively and with linear a linear approach, more form-based, it's possible that your shape design or your value design suffers. So it's it's having to balance these things. Like Glenn says, it really needs to have all of these elements to be like really successful. And so uh, a lot of times we end up, it's, it's like triage. We're diagnosing a problem we see with a lot of students' work. And so we talk about that more, but then it can make it sound like, oh, that's the most important thing. Like the interior form is probably not as important as the silhouette. I don't think uh, that's what Miles meant. I mean, unless, unless you can correct me, it's just that it tends to get neglected. Is that is that a fair way to say it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, well, um, so I know we're going way over on time here, so we should probably move on to our, our second place winner on craftsmanship. Um, this were, yeah, these are these are really, really fantastic job. Um, I'll keep my comments really brief and I'll let you guys sort of get into it a little more. But the Steve Houston drawing on the left, a lot of people attempted this. It was really tricky, just like that Gruz was, was tricky. For whatever reason, this drawing people struggled a lot with. I think this was the most successful um, study of this Houston drawing. I mean, we have the advantage of being able to, on New Masters Academy, you can watch 150 hours of Steve Houston drawing. So you really can learn, just like with Glenn, you can learn how... He did this, but it's still a very difficult, it's a very difficult technique. I also really, really liked this Charles Dana Gibson in the center. Again, this was a popular one. A lot of people attempted this. I think this might've been one of the top two most successful 
versions of this. Um, one thing people struggled with was the line weight. And I'm sure I'll let Miles, uh, Miles understands this better than I do. But I thought that um, that was really successfully done just all across the board, just really solid craftsmanship, three very different drawings, three very different drawing techniques. I think he kind of nailed it on, on all three of these. And so um, maybe I can pass it on to Miles now and you can you can sort of let us know what you thought about this piece. Yeah, uh, yeah. This was such a, a strong set. I mean, I think we were all like really excited to see to see these drawings together because they um, they're so different. Each one of them is so incredibly different and equally successful. Um, I you know I'm not. I'll admit that I'm not uh, really familiar with these artists in particular. Um, so as looking at the copies and then looking at the originals, I mean, I I just personally felt that uh, from the craftsmanship standpoint, we're just exceedingly really, really good. Um, I mean, we've talked about objective and subjectivity with art, uh, but just objectively speaking, incredibly accurate. Uh, just, and that's not easy to do. You know, it's, it's not as simple as just um, putting your pencil down and just tracing along with what the artist did. Because I think Glenn had mentioned before that you really got to understand the process of the artists and, I honestly don't. <laughs> I don't know how the artists originally made the work, and then how the artists copied the work. Um, but they, we, we saw so many variants of these three pieces, and these stood out like hands down, um, just really, really beautifully well done. Um, so maybe I can throw it to Glenn to offer any more on the plus side or the critique side. Yeah, you know, when you're looking at the copy of Steve's things, what we had just been talking about in the previous ones, the relationship, the line to form, that these are beautiful. He's a great interior form, but he's also got a really good contour. And the copy is excellent, really. And then Gibson, Gibson is, is actually pretty darn hard. Uh, with, with doing it, and it's a totally different kind of drawing. It's if you look at Gibson's drawings really close, there is no structure of form. To think. It's a, a mass of drawings that gives you the impression, but he's so bloody good. And that uh, I use him a lot as examples for like capturing action and gesture and expression. And he's so good at it, and that you, every everything you can get a drawing that's got 50, 60 heads in it or figures in it, they're all different, and they all got these fantastic qualities. That's a hard. That's a that is difficult. And the way the drawing is done with the line, putting it in, it, it's beautiful. It's really these are all in the watercolor. They're all really really good quality done um, yeah. yeah it's it's interesting glenn how you talk about how gibson will like intentionally violate like the shapes like you have the feeling of form that's so strong yet if you look at like on the heavy gentleman on the left if you look at the the lines that are running on his thighs those are not following the form like that's almost like beginner level mistake. He's just going vertically on a form that's for shortening. So that should flatten it out. And yet he's so, like, I think it's a little bit like El Greco or something where it's so solid that he can make it look loose. You know what I mean? It's it's uh, yeah. making it look easy, even though it's very difficult. Like I've seen professional teachers and influencers try to study Charles Dana Gibson and post the results. And those results were recently even that are less successful than this study, I think. Yeah. He's, 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 he's tough. <laughs> yeah, fantastic work. Now, um, if no one has anything else to add, I think we're ready for our final winner, which is going to be our first place. Did you have anything else to add, Glenn? Sorry if I no, did you. No. Okay, so this is our first place for craftsmanship. And um, wow. Yeah. <laughs> um, Maybe Glenn, I'll give you the last word. I'll start and then maybe Miles and then we can well, do Glenn if that's right with you guys or do you want to start Glenn? Okay, uh, well, we we all we all really gravitated to this copies of the jury. It was so well done. And it was sort of like, wow. 
it is pretty good. Then this is the 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 one in the middle. This is the after a cambiasso. Now it's a very unusual. Most people uh, I use them a lot in class because it's part of like the third week of my <laughs> class. But working with the box form, so the analysis, the understanding, uh, the process that he went through. Now this he's really covered in here a lot of what we've talked about of trying to understand how the drawing, what was the process. And in this case, why did he draw that way? And he did that kind of drawing as an analysis. So doing an analysis of an analysis, uh, it really comes through. And then with the uh, Hokusai on the end, and the, showing it in the two panels the way it was done. Uh, it's really beautiful. They were all, all three sort of, in the end, sort of stuck out. And so they're really, really well. I, I have really nothing more to add to that. I think I was sort of blown away with some of this stuff. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Miles, did you want to go ahead and, or, I, you know, I can go and then you can, you can wrap it up, Miles, if you don't mind. No. Yeah, I, I feel the same way. The doer was, I mean, I can, probably speak for all three of us. We've all studied Dewar. Um, it's a really, really hard technique. Again, using line to design the form, and then the line has gesture and movement, and then the parts of the forms are all designed, and then all of this comes together. You know, it, it's, it's some of the most sophisticated drawing ever done. And uh, when you try to do studies of this, it's really humbling because you realize um, the difference between where you're at and where and where this artist was at. And so one thing I thought was particularly successful about these hands was how the form is modeled and control of the value in the hands. Now, this is not a big critique. I think the sleeves, although Dewar himself spent less time on them probably, um, you probably could have been a little more careful. Like it's the only like off note there is the hands are so well done, but um, the sleeves, I don't think, I. I were as carefully handled and the fewer lines you have the more those lines probably need to like speak so that was just a little bit um i thought the cambiasso like glenn said was fantastic really good analysis there cambiasso when i'm drawing from imagination is probably the artist that i think of the most in terms of just figuring out where things are in space it's very clear and i know you've you know you study it with new masters academy you've studied at uh with vilpu academy i know that you understand how this sort of drawing is done and, and we can see that um, this is very minor but you know i might have actually graphite it out a little bit more in that because it's so strong you know uh the only note for me is maybe the uh, uh second to leftmost figure you might have got you know the angles a little off you might have struggled a little bit with that but some of the i mean you're just nailing it on on, on most of this um, I would have maybe cleaned it up a little bit. And just real quick too, there were a few that didn't make it partially because of presentation and especially like when we get to the third place. So when people out there are doing these challenges, take extra time to make sure that you're showing a clean presentation. It matters it matters in every professional context imaginable. And it, and it matters in terms of a challenge. Like we didn't give somebody uh, one of these slots because of the photography, like it hasn't come down to that, but it is something that, affects how we how we see it. So just in terms of polish, I think the same thing with graphite. Like I would have, if that's truly a layer, you know, you might think that it's, it's nice to leave it in to show it. In this case, I probably erased those lines. And uh, I thought the Hokusai was really well done. Again, I think people struggle really with the curves within the body of the waves sometimes, like those, because those the, the, those curves are such a tour of, of like the ability to actually move your hand in that way. I don't think anybody, truly nailed it, but this is definitely one of the best, you know, examples of the Hokusai uh, that, that we saw. And um, maybe I can give the final words on this piece to Miles and then we can we can wrap it up. But congratulations, Dylan. Uh, fantastic work. And I know how active you've been and how disciplined you've been with your study. You know, Dylan's been going through the Russian course right now, has done the Vilpu courses, has been just like a sort of a super student and it definitely shows. Oh, yeah. Um... Definitely, uh, definitely does show uh, the diligence, and I think you just said discipline, right? That the the first Dur copy shows an incredible level of discipline to sit there and almost uh, document every line, <laughs> even the pentimenti lines that 
are him just abandoning a contour. Uh, Dylan here has even decided as a copy, I'm just going to go ahead and put those in. To me, that just shows uh, what he's doing is he's got his observer. Like he's just observing so keenly on everything. Um, and even stuff that I'm like, oh, I'm surprised that Durr even, you know, you, he's included lines that I, I was even surprised that Durr would have done. You know, at first I thought, oh, maybe that's Dylan's interpretation. And then sure enough, I looked at the original. I was like, oh, okay, he's still following along. Um, so it was just such a fantastic drawing. I mean, all three were so strong. This one definitely just jumped out uh, at me right away because there were so many other attempts at it. And this one, this one really hit it out of the park. Um, it really did. Uh, one thing I would say about this drawing would be to be a, a little bit more sensitive with the line weight um, because the, the line work, as beautiful as it is, it could benefit from a little more delicacy. Uh, so I, I don't teach a lot, but the times that I have taught, I try to remind my students that the instrument they're holding, whether it's pen or pencil, the weight of the instrument alone is enough to produce a mark. You don't need any applied force. And but, and I'm guilty of this too. I grew up with a heavy hand um, drawing, like always. And it took a lot of time and effort on my part to pull back on that weight, to just allow the instrument to have its own sort of input so I think that your Dura copy, that the Dura copy in this particular example, especially the the hand on the bottom right, would have really, uh, the drawing would have just sung even harder with a little bit more delicacy there. But it was just an amazing, it was, it was a very beautiful copy. Like, you should be very, very proud. Um, so, uh, yeah, there's not, I, I think at this point, wow. again, I'm just going to be reiterating things that Joshua and Glenn had said. but. Um, it was such a it was such a beautiful copy, so so very well done on that. Yeah, well, uh, congratulations, Dylan. Congratulations on on everyone who won. I just, just as a reminder, there were so many good submissions. Like our our judge yeah. our judging call that we did was already finalists, and we spent so long on here because there was an enormous amount of of, of great work that was being submitted, and some did come down to we liked it more than this drawing but overall these three drawings are stronger and so there were a lot of really close calls um next challenge that's going on right now is a 100 hand drawing challenge the uh, the judges are uh, camille corey elia marachnik and uh me i'm trying to draft miles to <laughs> actually because miles is a bit of a special i'm trying to draft him to to actually be a be a judge in this but for this next challenge, you know, this next one's a marathon. So it's 100 hands. You're drawing your own hands. And so that's something that Miles, I'm sure Glenn has done this as well. Um, I've done as well. And so the idea here is um, to try to put your hand in different positions to try to work out a lot of the practical uh, aspects of it and not having it pre-flattened out for you in a photograph, which is sort of an extra challenge, is really getting a sense of the three-dimensional uh, aspect of it. I wish I would have brought this, but I did get a, a mirror on a little gooseneck uh, tube, which is actually really convenient. Like you can get them online, um, but like a, like a vanity mirror on a tube so that you can put the mirror in different positions and then pose your hands and then see your hand. If you want to draw like if right handed so it's hard to draw my right hand from my right hand so you can look into the mirror on my left hand and then make my left hand the right hand or you can pose it and draw so there's kind of some practical things in this challenge it's a really it's it's a really, uh useful challenge you're going to end up with like a sketchbook of 100 hands like george bridgman and those are hands you can go back to and refer and put them into your designs i mean personally i, I will draw ahead for imagination or hands and then i'll mix them and put them together and so that's a really useful practical thing that you get out of this i really encourage everyone listening if you feel like you want to try a challenge go to our discord the links in the description and you can join in the challenge has just been live for five days you have the whole month um, you should really get involved in whether or not you end up winning. Like this isn't a contest, it's a challenge. It's not about the prizes, although the, the people who, who did win did a fantastic job. And we were blown away overall. And that's the whole point is, is for you to become a better artist, a better version of yourself. And a, a lot of the information is here. Like New Masters Academy has got thousands of hours of training. There really is everything there that you need to get to a, a very advanced level. 
a lot of it has to do with human behavior and psychology. And a challenge is a good excuse to do things that we should have been doing already. And I know for the master challenge, a lot of people have said, I'm so glad I did this. I've just learned so much. I'm going to keep doing master studies. And since this challenge submission has been up, they've continued this process. And this is a skill that you can continue your entire life and you can explore different artists and learn new techniques. And Miles talks about this in the podcast, but if you're trying a landscape and then you're struggling, well, then you can go see, you know, how Claude Lorraine did it and then take those lessons and bring it back to your work. And so the old masters are, are like an endless, and not just the old masters too, you know, the great illustrators and Lion Decker and Dean Cornwell and, you know, contemporary artists who are excellent. Obviously the instructors at New Masters Academy, artists like Kim Jung Ji, there's so many great artists out there that we, we can study from, but doing the master copy is one way that you can essentially take this knowledge, whether or not the artist is alive and whether or not the artist wants to give it to you, you can extract this. So I, I really hope to see you guys continue with that. I'd love to see you get involved on our Discord channel and join the next challenge. I want to thank our judges so much. I know this ran long. I really appreciate Miles. Uh, make sure you follow Miles on Instagram. He's got one of the coolest Instagram accounts that I follow, like uh, really amazing work that he's doing. And it's, it's miles.yoshida uh, at Instagram. Um, Thank you so much for joining us, Miles. We really appreciate it. We're really looking oh, forward yeah. to your course. That's my pleasure. Uh, Glenn, of course, you can go to Vilpu Academy. That's the so Glenn is part of New Masters Academy. He's one of the senior instructors right from the beginning. Glenn also has his own online school called Vilpu Academy. Uh, Vilpu can actually get uh, from Glenn, as I understand. You can take. There's always classes running every term. It's a really fantastic, intimate way to study with, uh, in my opinion, one of the best draftsmen alive. I think both of you guys definitely fit that category. So uh, make sure to check out Vilpu Academy. And, and uh, of course, New Masters Academy as well. We're going to be publishing the Vilpu drawing manual soon. So we'll give you updates on that. We're really excited about that. It looks like it's going to be a hardcover. We're going all out. Uh, that's, in my, that's my favorite book on figure drawing. Um, by far. And so I'm really proud that, you know, Glenn has trusted us to be able to bring that to you guys. We'll be sharing that. Thank you so much for participating. Thanks for sticking with us. I know this ran a bit long and uh, yeah, thanks very much, you guys. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. Yeah. Great job, everybody. A lot of fun. All right. Till next All time. Right. Bye. Bye. Keep drawing.